In front of a 60,000-strong crowd, the ancient Celtic sports of shinty and hurling combine to produce a thrilling spectacle in Dublin's main stadium. The shinty sticks of the Scottish national team are pitted against the hurlies of the Irish in a clash as fierce as any ancient battle. We're all Celts and it's important that, that we would try and get a game together that both countries could play against each other. For our players it's important because it gives them recognition at, at the national level, it gives them the opportunity to play with, under the Irish jersey. Although both sports come from the same distant route, the rules of this cross-code game are unique. What we've tried to do is compromise as, as best we can. Obviously the Shinty players are different stick, the Hull is different stick, so we believe the best way of achieving the most effective balance is to not allow players to handle the ball with the exception of the goalkeeper. So the Shinty player can stick to traditional skills of playing the ball on the ground. The Holden player can lift it and strike it, but it's not permitted to take the ball in his hand. That significant rule change from the game of hurling can be hard to hold to, as Irish centre forward Neil McManus explains. You know, all the guys in there have been playing hurling since they've been, you know, maybe three or four years of age. And whenever a ball comes to you at chest height, the natural instinct is to catch it. So, you know, whenever you can't do that, it is, you know, you really have to think about what you're doing and concentrate. But the fact is, this shinty hurling match is a warm-up for the evening's main attraction, another cross-code international between Gaelic and Australian rules football. Sharing the limelight with Ireland's most popular sport, it's hoped, will raise the profile of both hurling and its sister sport in Scotland, shinty. It's the only international that we have, and we view this occasion as um, the ultimate in, in a pathway for, for our top players, where they, they've played for a club, they've played for a district or a region, and now they're playing for their country. We're still a minority sport, and we don't have mass audiences. There are just 46 listed shinty clubs in Scotland, compared to 2,500 hurling clubs in Ireland, but both are amateur sports, and that's the way they are likely to stay. There was a push by players some years back that, it, that they want to pay for play, but now that's gone totally off the equation. We're working very closely with the Gaelic Players Association in developing a positive player welfare scheme, and pay for play is not an issue. But winning sponsorship can be. You cannot make a career out of an amateur sport, there's just no money in it for us. Um, if there was, then obviously we'd be very, very happy. Scottish Hydroelectric recently signed a second three-year contract with Shinty's governing body as its main sponsor for an undisclosed sum. But every player on this pitch needs to hold down a day job in order to survive. Former Shinty international captain Gary Innes has an instrumental part to play in promoting his beloved sport. An image of him playing Shinty was used by Scottish Celtic rock group Runrig on a recent album cover, and he features playing the accordion on Runrig's Shinty tribute song, Clash of the Ash, a reference to the type of wood used to make the Shinty stick. Despite its ancient roots in the Scottish Highlands, Shinty is a sport undergoing change. That's with great respect to the Camerick Association and uh, putting money in, back into the sport and getting it right back to grassroots level in the cities. <laughs>